Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is category theory. Uh, today I would like to tell you something about the main properties of functions, basically. Um, there will be faithfulness, fullness, uh, and so on. We'll see, um, but kind of the main idea and kind of the main property is that functors preserve diagrams. So in some sense, category theory is all about diagrams and functors preserve them because they have the right notion of maps of morphisms between categories. So let's have a look at the first slide here. So I have two categories, C and D. And as usually, I like to illustrate categories as kind of universes, kind of, uh, but my best approximation of a universe is this circle here, or this circle. Uh, so I have a green universe and have a red type of universe, whatever, C and D. And well, category theory is all about, you would think, uh, objects, it's not, it's all about arrows. And if you draw the first arrows, actually what you should draw is kind of the first type of diagrams. So category theory is in some sense all about diagrams. In some other sense, it's all about functors. In some other sense, it's all about natural transformations or whatever. But certainly diagrams are very important in category theory. And what makes a functor so important or the correct notion is that it sends a diagram to a diagram. So it preserves diagrams, right? So here my functor, I call it F and it sends this diagram with X, Y, Z diagram to an F of X. Uh, well, of course, this is an F of Y and this is an F of Z diagram, right? So it sends every arrow to an arrow between the corresponding things and so on. So here the arrow G is sent to the arrow F, G and so on, right? So the main point in some sense about functors is that they preserve commutative diagrams. And this kind of gives rise to several things that functors preserve. So everything that kind of it's defined using a, a commutative diagram is preserved by a functor. And everything that's kind of not defined by a commutative diagram is usually not preserved by a functor. Um, so let's have actually a look. So injective is something, well, that in terms of categories looks a little bit like this. It's this, uh, you could cancel F from a certain site. In this case, because it's kind, of, it's kind of a little bit sad that everything is kind of reversed in notation. So you can cancel F from the left. So F uh, G1, F G2 implies G1 equals G2. And then F is called categorically injective or a monomorphism or monic or whatever. So what could be the correct statement for functors, which is not quite true uh, in some sense, as I will going to explain in a second, but kind of a functor should be something in the category of categories. And you could imply this, uh, you, you could apply this definition of injective using this diagram, but kind of the correct definition of an injective functor turns out to be the one of whatever faithful is. And we're going to explain faithful in a second. Correct, I should have put it correct in huge quotation marks because there is no wrong or correct definition, of course. But anyway, I think you get the point. So kind of the, the most practical, that's what I should have said, the most practical definition is the one that is called faithful. And it's this following definition. So whenever you have a functor, because you preserve commutative diagrams, you get an associated map on the home spaces, on the arrow spaces. So all arrows from X to Y in my little green category. So here's my green category and here's my red category. Uh, so all arrows from X to Y, you can uh, associate to them an F of X. So you get actually a map from this set to this set here. And this induced map should have some properties and then you would call the functor injective. So you want this induced map to be injective. Uh, that's kind of a, a little bit of a strange definition because now on the level of functors, you again rely on uh, living in the world of sets, which actually in some sense shouldn't do, but uh, in, for most practical terms, this is the correct definition. So let's, let's just go with it. And it's not quite the same as being monic in the category, in the category cat. So cat is my category of categories and monic, monic was this one here, monic in the category of categories is slightly different than a faithfulness. It also needs some condition on objects, which is kind of, you can kind of ignore that. So in some sense, it turns out that faithful is, is this um, object, is a set free definition, just using 
uh, it's monic in the category of categories. As I said, it's not quite true, but it comes very close to be quite true. And an example of a monic fun uh, of a monic functor, yes, of a monic functor, absolutely, of a faithful functor, is the forgetful functor, which is faithful. Why is it faithful? Well, because uh, uh, linear maps are the same if the underlying maps are the same. So if you just forget the linear structure, then uh, they, will be, they will be still different. So you certainly get an associated uh, map here upstairs, uh, which is uh, in general. Okay, and then you, of course, would like to write down surge activity, and you already see a little bit that this, this kind of this idea of being an epic falls a little bit apart. It's kind of one of those fun facts, which is a little bit surprising if you see it for the first time. We'll come to that in a second. So here's a diagram for being an epic an epimorphism. Um, so it's kind of exactly the opposite of this one. It's a dual graph. And yeah, well, you, the definition of full is actually also, well, full is a dual of faithful. And it looks very similar to the induced map here is subjective now. But it turns out that in this case, I don't really know a good way to get rid of this set-based definition because it, it actually completely fails in the gallery of cut. So full implies epic in cut, but the converse is, as far as I'm aware, very, very far from being true. Actually, I don't even know a good uh, characterization of the converse. So I don't know any good way of expressing epic functors in, in cat, um, which is already pretty bad. So that's certainly not very practical as a definition of being a subject to functor if you just can't characterize them. And that's probably also another reason why people would prefer this definition as to be the definition of what surjectivity for a functor is. Um, and yeah, the standard functor, uh, or well, the easy example of a functor that I'm using here very often, a forgetful functor, is not full. And of course it isn't. Why shouldn't it be full? There are certainly maps that are not linear maps, right? Uh, if it would be full, it would, would say that all maps are linear maps, but certainly there are maps that are not linear maps. So there's no reason for it to be full, and yeah, it is not full. Um, okay, and I, for completeness, I just list the property of functors here. So any functor satisfies, well, something like this, so it satisfies that F reserves commutative diagrams, and then everything that's kind of defined via commutative diagram is also preserved. So F preserves isomorphisms. What does that mean? That means if F is an iso, then F of F is an iso, and F is, of course, my functor. And F preserves identities. It means if F is the identity, then F of F is the identity. So everything that's kind of defined by a commutative diagram is also preserved by a functor. It's kind of the point of a functor anyway. And some functors, it's kind of different. So here, a huge line in the middle. And at the bottom, I only have some functors, not all functors, just some. They could be faithful, they could be an embedding. So embedding is faithful and injective on objects. That's actually um, here, this one here, that's monic in cut. It's called an embedding or some sources would call it an embedding. Right, it's an embedding, it's this injective condition and it's an additional condition to be injective on objects. Um, it's called an embedding, whatever. F could be full, F could be an isomorphism, um, which is, in the definition here, for example, equivalent to being fully faithful and bijective on objects. That's, by the way, a huge theorem, maybe not a huge theorem, but maybe a proposition. So at isomorphism, what you would say is that there's an inverse F, F inverse equals the identity factor and similar in the opposite direction. And actually you can give a set theoretical interpretation of that saying that it's fully faithful, so it's full and faithful, that's usually abbreviated to fully faithful, and bijective on objects um, in a certain sense. So it's got essentially subjective fusion. But anyway, so this kind of a property a functor could have, right? So it's injective, surjective, and bijective if you want. And for injective, it's not quite clear what you should use as a definition um, because of this monic in cut, and for surjective, Epic in cut is just, as far as I know, very, very hard to describe. So uh, let, let's just use this one as a definition of being surjective anyway. And then you can have reflecting properties, which is kind of the opposite of preserving properties. F preserves identities is what is written here. And F reflects identities, which is not true for any functor, is exactly the opposite. 
So whenever F spits out an identity, then the input was an identity, right? So here, what I have is whenever you input an identity, F spits out an identity. And at the bottom, I have a exactly the converse. Whenever you, <laughs> whenever F spits out an identity, the input was an identity. I hope I have messed that up, but you can, you can read the expressions. It's probably easier to, than to listen to my raffle here. Um, actually, it, anyway, so you can have reflecting properties of kind of everything. You can have reflect isomorphisms, kind of, again, uh, the opposite of uh, preserving isomorphisms. And there are many, many, many more that we'll meet here. So I kind of used this slide to kind of collect a little bit of kind of properties of functors because they're not as straightforward as you think. Usually what I would think is just you get, okay, it's, it's kind of the right notion of arrows and cut and you just then run the general machinery for cut and whatever comes out is injective or surjective or whatever, but that's not quite true uh, in practice. So what you really usually need is something like face fullness or full. And just as I said, not quite epic or modern. Okay, so just a list of examples. Um, let's go through it. The forgetful functor is what I mentioned before. It's faithful. Why is it faithful? Well, because as I said, you can distinguish maps, linear maps on, on the map part. There's, there's no linearity involved. If they're different as maps, then they're different. So if you forget the linear structure, different maps are still different. But it's not full, and it's also not an event. Um, full, as, a, as I already said before, it, it can't be full, for example, um, because there are maps that are certainly not linear maps. And there's the power set functor, which takes a set to its power set. And that's an embedding, but it's not full. Uh -huh. You can check that, it's an embedding, it's not full. Um, Demetrization is a kind of fun functor from kind of a certain type of matrix spaces to topological spaces. You kind of forget that you have a metric space, you still have an underlying topological space. It's actually a fully faithful functor, which is not an embedding, for example. There's a discrete topology functor, which goes from set to top. Um, and this is a full embedding. What could be the discrete topology functor? Well, it sends, um, well, it's, it's kind of here, uh, illustrated here. It goes from set, it's my left universe, to top, it's my right universe. It sends every x to the discrete topo the, the topological space obtained by taking the discrete topology on x. and Kind of every map will be continuous because you just use uh, the discrete topology. So um, actually, you just it, it's just really a nice functor. Well, it's not a nice functor, but it is a functor from set to topological spaces. And of course, there's also the opposite one, um, which is just in the discrete one. It's also a full embedding. Anyway, so this is also a list of functors, right? Um, there's an inclusion functor, for example, from uh, Z mod, which is the billing groups. To groups and this would be a full full embedding and there are many 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 more functors that we will meet so kind of the main point of this slide is actually to give you a lot of examples of factors uh which you might not have not, not have seen before as a power set factor is kind of a funny one to think about it's actually not so hard and uh, top, topological factors if you want to turn sets into topological spaces which is actually not so trivial because there's no straightforward uh, standard canonical a topology on the space. So you kind of need to take the two extremes, the discrete one or the indiscrete one, where either everything is open or nothing is open. It's kind of the uh, two extreme parts of the story. Okay, so the main purpose of this video was kind of to introduce you a little bit to uh, functors again. So functors are super important. We've seen examples of functors in this video, properties of functors. And what I would like to stress is that sometimes functors are a little bit tricky. It's not as straightforward as you think. It's not like, oh, they're the right objects in, in, uh, of arrows in cut. It's totally correct. They're the correct arrows in cut. They're the, the, the correct arrows between categories. But sometimes the properties that you throw at categories are not quite reflected on functors. Um, for example, this, the surjectivity of functors still uses the set theoretical setup, which is a little bit disappointing, but I don't really know any good way to get rid of it. There might be one, but I simply just don't know it. Anyway, that's what it is. I hope you like functors. Really, really, functors are really, really cool. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you next time.